What do, you, what do you say to voters who are upset that those are the two choices? Get over yourself. Those are the two choices. Yeah, yeah. love that. Right? Get over it. I don't think it was a very wise statement on her part. <laughs> Popular sports personality Stephen A. Smith uh, apparently knows more about politics than he does about hockey. Once famously saying that the only thing he knows about hockey is that the puck is black. <laughs> now, I'm going to get to his recent comments on this Hillary Clinton clip. I just want to say the NHL playoffs are coming up. It's going to be big playoffs. Go Leafs go. But let's get to this clip. So Hillary Clinton, for some reason, is still making public appearances. This is helping nobody. It's not helping Democrats. But here she is on Jimmy Fallon's show, and I'll get to Stephen A. Smith's response to this. But it's Biden versus Trump. And yes, we know that. It what, is. Uh, it is. What do, you, what do you say to voters who are upset that those are the two choices? Get over yourself. Those are the two choices. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Right? And, yeah, and good. you know, it's kind of like one is old and effective and compassionate, yeah. has a heart and really cares about people. And one is old and has been charged with 91 felonies. <laughs> yeah, OK. I mean, OK, interesting. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't understand why this is even a hard choice, really. I yeah. don't understand it. Yeah. But we have to go through the election, and hopefully people will realize what's at stake because it's an existential uh, question. I, what kind of country we're going to have, what kind of democracy we're going to have. And people who blow that off are not paying attention because it's not like Trump, his enablers, his empowerers, his allies are not telling us what they want to do. I mean, they're pretty clear about what kind of country they want. Yeah. Hillary Clinton, once again, reminding us how terrible of a communicator she is. Even though there are elements of this that I think are also obvious and I agree with, couching this in the idea that telling people to get over it is the way to get them out to vote, I think is absolutely the stupid, stupidest way to go about it. I mean, and don't take it from me, take it from her election loss. This is the only person to lose to Donald Trump. The one person hated more than Donald Trump. So, uh... I, Hillary Clinton, if she wants to help Democrats, needs to stop making public appearances. But let me get to Stephen A. Smith's reaction to this. Stephen, great to have you on set. So what do you make of that? Get over it? I don't think it was a very wise statement on her part. <laughs> How did that work out for her in 2016? I think that's something that we have to recognize. Yes, yeah, she won the popular vote, but at the end of the day, she wasn't the president of the United States. It was him. You can look at her not campaigning in Wisconsin in the last days, not campaigning in Pennsylvania in the last days. You can look at some of the stuff that they were saying about her that sort of distracted things from where it should have been in terms of Comey and his report uh, from the FBI. You can bring up a whole bunch of things, but at the end of the day, the last thing you need to do is to do anything that could agitate a potential voter in this particular election. Hearing him talk about Hillary Clinton and politics and getting this bang on just makes me wish he paid more attention to hockey. Because <laughs> I would love to hear his opinion on hockey. He's a great communicator. He's very engaging. He's very opinionated. But he's someone that, that I think holds maybe a little sway in terms of, at the very least, he gives you the idea or, or gives you an idea of how typical people think. And this is bang on. And as I said, there, there's more to it, to uh, his argument here. But just on what the points he made, Hillary Clinton needs to understand that she is the reason she lost the election. And she does not understand that. I mean, her book is all about blaming everybody else for her election loss. This unwillingness to look at the mistakes that you made as a politician, take accountability for that, and learn from those mistakes. Hillary Clinton does not possess those abilities. And if she had, she could have been a great voice for Democrats. If she had learned from the mistakes that she made, realized that she wasn't speaking to working class voters, realized she completely ignored certain states that she took for granted, realized that she completely sidelined Bernie Sanders and the entire movement he had built throughout 2016. If those lessons were learned, then she could have been a solid asset for Democrats if she had come out of that with those lessons. But clearly she has not. Now, I want to get to uh, Smith's last half of uh, his comments here. What do you make about the actual argument that she's making? I mean, she's basically saying two old people, yes, yes. but they're substantively different. I mean, Trump Absolutely. has 91 well, counts against him. Well, and listen. If you're Nobody's brought that up more than me. 
uh, for, yeah. you know, four indictments, 91 counts, impeached twice. I'm not voting for him. I've said that to a lot of people. I've said that to you. But at the end of the day, what I'm saying is, is that at some point in time, you've got to take into account what the voters are thinking about. The voters, a lot of them out there, tens of millions of them out there, by the way, don't care what he's going through right now. They don't care about his guilt or innocence, his perceived guilt or innocence. They don't care about the 91 counts. They're thinking about their lives. And a lot of times we see politicians taking the positions that they're taking and while we can respect their candor and their honesty, they do seem a bit detached at times from what the voters are actually feeling and what the voters are actually thinking. Nobody wants to hear that from Hillary Rodham Clinton at this particular moment in time, because especially if you're Joe Biden, what are you really, really worried about right now? You're worried about folks coming to the polls. You're worried about them showing up to the polls to vote for you. You're not worried even about them voting for Trump. You're worried about them not showing up to vote for yeah. you. That doesn't exactly encourage them to get up out of their seats and go to the polls. This is the message that is often lost on the Democratic Party. And in a bit here, I'm going to get to some polling showing you just how bad things are looking currently for Joe Biden and how they clearly need to turn it around by, at the very least, pushing Hillary Clinton off television. Let's, at the very least, try to avoid that. Because telling people that already are not feeling great about Joe Biden to get over it, when has that ever worked in any, in any situation? If, if someone's mad at you and you tell them to get over it, are they going to go, oh, you know what? You're right. I'll get over it now. Is that, has that ever been effective in any situation? So turnout is the most important thing here. Democrats win when turnout is high. They lose when turnout is low. This election is not a horse race between Biden and Trump. It's a horse race between Biden and the couch. If people stay home, Biden will lose. There is, like, looking at polling and looking at who people, who people previously uh, voted for compared to, you know, if they may vote for Joe Biden or not, people that are potential Democratic voters did not vote for Donald Trump last time, and they have no plan to vote for Donald Trump. They plan to stay home or vote for Biden. So Trump is not your competition. Pointing out Trump's, you know, the fact that he's a criminal is, is obvious. People that would vote for Biden at this point already know that. Reminding them of that is not necessarily going to get them to come out to vote. You have to both present a, it's both a message, but it's also action. Biden is currently the president. And there are a number of issues where the Democratic voter base, especially younger people, marginalized people, are very upset with him for good reason. His Middle East policy currently is supporting mass destruction. This is not a winning position. It's both morally the wrong thing to do. It's also politically the stupid thing to do. If he continues doing that, at the very least, he's losing Michigan. So there has to be a massive turnaround on, on Middle East policy specifically. But even when it comes to every other issue, like this is, this is less about Trump and a lot more about Joe Biden and his failings. Now, looking at polling here, this is the Real Clear Politics uh, poll average. So nationally right now, things, you could argue, are looking okay. Trump is only up by less than a percentage uh, point. But looking at 2016, Hillary Clinton at this point, April 3rd, was up by 10, uh, over 10 and a half points. And then she lost. Biden was up by five or almost six points. And he's currently down by almost a percent. What's more important, of course, in the national poll here, because president is not decided by a national vote, which is ridiculous, but that's how it is. What's more important is uh, by state. Biden is losing every potential swing state. Arizona, he's losing. Trump up 5.2. Nevada, Trump up by 3.2. Wisconsin, Trump up by uh, 0 0.6. Michigan, Trump up by 3.4. Pennsylvania, Trump up by 0 0.6. North Carolina, Trump up by 4.6. Georgia, Trump up by 4.5 points. This is why Joe Biden has to be worried. The only way you address this is by speaking to your base, your potential voters, especially the people that got you the election victory in 2020 young people if you do not if you do not speak to young people and their issues and right now they are very concerned about human rights and again what is going on in the middle east 
If you don't speak to that, you are absolutely going to lose. Reminding them that Trump is a criminal is not going to do it. And look, my argument for voting is that you want to vote for your weakest opponent. Since politicians generally are not great, especially when we're talking about you know, national politics, you want to vote for who you think you're able to better sway. Do you have a better chance at protesting a Republican presidency with Donald Trump? Or do you have a better shot at protesting a Democratic presidency? I think it's very clear, based on the trajectory and what these two parties have done in recent years, that is, it is much easier to sway or put pressure on a Democratic party than a Republican one. So you want to look at who is your weakest opponent. The weakest opponent is the Democratic party. You want to vote for them. Voting for people because they did something for you or because you expect something from them is only going to let you down. 